Good morning. How are you today? Praise the Lord. Amen. Can you put a little bit the master, the master, a little bit down? Praise the Lord. We've got a wonderful day. Amen. Hallelujah. It's good to see you. It's good to see you today. Amen. And uh, is there any other better place where we could be in a Sunday, sunny day like this one? I don't think so. Amen. Amen. Are you happy? Yes. Are you happy? Yes. Has the Lord been good to you this week? Yes. yes. Amen. I know that because Amen. you are here, I'm here. And this is a, it's a miracle of God. It's a, I mean, each day when we get up, you know, get up, you know, and God give us the possibility, you know, to be with all the brothers and sisters, with our families, or he, he allow us to go to our job. It's a, it's a blessing from God. Amen. Amen. So, hallelujah. Uh, he is good, and uh, he has not changed. <coughs> the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. And he's ready today to bless you and uh, to, to transform your life. While we are here in this world, the Bible says that we have tribulation, but the Lord says, Behold, I've overcome. Amen. Amen. And the Lord is here to give you the victory. The Lord is here to give me the victory. So good morning today. You know, Trevor is not here. Um, some of you, you know, is a, a little bit feeling not really well with the stomach and everything. And uh, but he'll be fine. He'll be he'll be fine. In a minute, we'll be just praying for him, and uh, because the Lord is there with him as well. Amen. So he send you uh, his love to you. And uh, praise the Lord. We are going to start uh, with uh, uh, how we start uh, every single Sunday. How many nationalities we've got today? All right, let's, let's, let's try and see. How many of you are from Scotland? Yes. Yeah. All right. Scotland. Uh, anyone from Iceland? Yes. Right. Anyone from Wales? <laughs> right. Anyone from Ireland? Ireland, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone from Northern Ireland? Yeah. Right. I don't think we've got some people from England today, have we? Yeah. All right. Anyone from England? Yeah. Right. Good, good, good. Anyone from Spain? Yeah. Yeah. Anyone from Colombia? Right, praise the Lord. Anyone from Norway? Uh, Denmark? Any other nationalities? Belgium. Belgium, praise the Lord, Belgium. From Belgium. Holland? All right, praise the Lord, from Holland too. Philippines? Philippines? Yes. All right. India? Yes. Ah. Praise the Lord. Anyone from Benidorm? <laughs> <laughs> from a little bit of, of Mucha Mian? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Amen. Let's pray. And uh, in, in a second we'll be just starting. And uh, we are going to give the honor. In this church we give the honor to God. Amen. And uh, but I want I, I want to encourage you <coughs> in this morning to to trust the Lord with all your heart. This is a new day. It's a new uh, opportunity for God to, to to bless us today. He knows exactly how you have come to this place in the need. Maybe you've come, you know, with big needs. The Bible said everything that is impossible for men. All these things that are possible for God. Amen. Amen. We are trusting the Lord who has created the whole universe. The same God who created you and the same God who knew you before you were in your mom's womb. Amen. So hallelujah. I think we are, I mean, we are privileged. How many of you, you consider that you are privileged? Yes. I consider privilege myself. Hallelujah. Because the life of Christ has come to our lives. So 
Let us pray in this morning. Let us uh, present our lives in front of him and let us trust him for, for, every, uh, uh, for every single day left like today. Father, we give you all the glory. Lord, we want to say thank you, Lord, for what you did for us, Lord, for sending your only and begotten Son, Lord. And um, thank you, Lord, because the most precious that you have, Lord, your Son, he came, Lord, to this world, and uh, he went to the cross, he died on the cross for us, and on the third day he rose again. And thank, thank you because we feel your presence, Lord, in this world. We feel your presence, Lord, in our, in, our, in our bodies, Lord. We feel the Holy Spirit in between us, Lord, in the middle of us, Lord. Father, we want to bless our pastor Trevor, Lord. Uh, we want to bless him, we want to declare that you are his healer. And uh, we really believe, Lord, that you are just going to touch him, Lord, and he's going to be well. We declare that he's going to be well in the name of Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Lord, and all the rest of the people, Lord, that they might be just going through sickness, Lord, or through disease. Lord, we proclaim, Lord, that you are our healer, Lord. Not only our Savior, but you are our healer too, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We trust you for this day. We know that in this day, Lord, you've prepared great things for our lives. Lord, thank you because in your agenda this day, it was just there, Lord. And each one of us, Lord, the, um, um, each one of us, Lord, we were in your agenda, Lord. We wrote in your agenda that we were going to be here, Lord, and we were going to receive all your blessings, Lord. So thank you, Father. We bless you, and we want to give you all the honor, Father, Lord for what you're going, to, you're going to do today in our lives. Receive all the glory, Father, and all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We are going to praise the Lord during the second song. We are going to pass the offering. And uh, I think we've got the announcements as well before. Wednesday, 11 o'clock, Bible study for our brothers and sisters that we just here with the uh, with the pastor and Maggie just um, uh, leading the Bible study and they have some uh, moment of prayer as well. Friday 11 communion service like every single Friday so very welcome. Amen. We believe that through the through the, the meetings on Wednesday and Friday the Lord is going to bless your life as well and you it will be an opportunity for you to bless others as well. So very welcome, Wednesday, Friday, 11 o'clock. And uh, Sunday, 18th of February, we've got Baptist service. Amen. Yes. So it's going to be a great day to celebrate. Amen. Yes. It's it's moment when we've got baptisms, you know, it's uh, hallelujah. It's, uh, someone has taken uh, the decision to follow the Lord and to, to hallelujah, to grow in the way. Amen. So praise the Lord. I don't know if I'm for forgetting any any more uh, announcements. Announcements? No. Okay. So our brothers and sisters are going to lead us in lead us in praise. And uh, please feel free to uh, to get up and give him all the glory. Amen. If you can't get up, just stay there, sit, but praise him and give him all the glory. I mean, it's a big, wonderful opportunity that in this day we've got. Uh, the opportunity to give him all the glory and to give him all the honor. Jesus is alive. Amen. Did you know that? Yes. Jesus is alive. Amen. Amen. So praise him. If you're born in, we're going to start to sing Jesus, my Lord, will love you forever. If you can't see the screen, it's number 374 in the box. Jesus, my Lord, will love you
is no one else like you, Lord Jesus. Amen? Amen. Is anyone like Jesus? No. I doubt it. Amen. That's the, hallelujah, it's, it's the, the great of, of the gospel. God made himself like a human like you and me. I mean, being God, hallelujah, he just humbled himself and came to this world to show you and to show me that, you know, he loves us so much, hallelujah. And he went to the cross and he died there and he was just, the most terrible suffer was upon his life. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And then on, on the third day he rose again. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, that one is, is proven, you know. You can't, uh, you can't, uh, you can't uh, defeat that because it's not, I mean, I always say, you know, I thought, I not only believe because the Bible says, you know, that I believe because the historical things and the historical facts that are there, you know. Hundreds of people, they saw Jesus more than 40 days when he rose again, showing himself to many. Amen, all type of people, you know, poor, rich, all type, hallelujah. And it's been registered in history that he really rose again on the third day, amen? amen. And he lives, hallelujah, today, hallelujah. And it's, it's, it's not uh, uh, mighty full and power, hallelujah. His omniscience is, is in everywhere at the, same, at the same time. So we are going to pray now and um, believe that God, God listened to your prayer and God listened to my prayer too. The Bible said that we, when you are, you know, two or three uh, to get in his name, he's there in the middle. So we listen to our prayers. So I'm just going to call our brother Gotham to come here and uh, help me with the, with the prayers. Is there any special prayer that you want to put in front of the front of God that you want our brothers and sisters to pray? We are going to pray for Trevor. Hallelujah. We, <coughs> Hallelujah. Believing and trusting already that God is just with him, just is blessing him, and he's going to be completely restored very soon. But is there any other uh, uh, prayer? But Father, you are with us, Lord, and we know that if you are with us, Lord, who can be against us, Lord? Thank you, Lord. We want to bless Israel, you know, everything that is going on, Lord, in the land of Israel, Lord. We bless Israel. The Bible says that all who bless Israel, they'll be blessed, Lord. And all those who are against Israel, <laughs> cursing Israel, Lord, they'll be in trouble. Father, we want to bless Israel, Lord. We want to bless all the soldiers, Lord, that they are there, Father. We want to pray for the peace of Israel, Lord. That peace, Lord, that, that surpass all understanding, Lord. We want your real peace, Lord, over Israel, Lord. And uh, we want you to... to, to Bless all the people in Israel, Lord. We want to bless in this war, Lord. We want this war to stop as well, Lord. We don't, we don't want, Lord, to see people dying, Lord. It doesn't matter what side, side, Lord. We pray for the, we pray for the peace of Israel, Lord, in this moment, in Jesus' name. Lord, bless you, Lord. Lord is good. Amen. I'm just going to, uh, to leave you with Gotham, who is give us, is going to give us a testimony. So, praise the Lord. Expect <coughs> great things from God. Amen. Amen. Expect, expect, expect big things from God. Amen. I want, to, I want to encourage. It doesn't matter the situation, how you came in. <coughs> the Lord knows, you know, and God, what is for sure is God wants to bless you. God wants to bless me this morning. Amen. So, just open your heart and uh, say to the Lord, Lord, what you want to bless me, that blessing I want it, and I take it by faith in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Thank you, Oscar. Well, it's a privilege to be here before you all today. I hope you can hear me. Um, if I'm shouting, somebody better tell me. Um, <coughs> yeah, I think there's one of the missionaries who said, um, expect great things from the Lord. And do great things for the Lord as we have high expectations and for not just for um, healing but for so many things that the Lord is working uh, and doing in our, in our world and in our communities and in our lives. Uh, it's my privilege just to be able to uh, share my testimony with you today. 
Uh, some of you, I think some of the couple of men may have heard it before. Um, but uh, I hope this is really an encouragement uh, and a strengthening for those of us who, who, uh, who are in the Lord and even for any here who are not, that uh, it may be an opportunity for you to reflect and consider where you're at uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is my testimony. Um, if, I, if I take forever, somebody will stop me, I'm sure. <laughs> so, um, just from my start, so I, I'm Indian origin, British national, lived most of my life in the UK, but I was born in Zambia, in Africa. And I was born to a Hindu family, in a Hindu family, and I was born um, in Zambia, in Africa, raised as a Brahmin, as a top caste uh, Hindu. Uh, and I was very uh, zealous um, in my Hinduism, and uh, I would uh, do all sorts of things to uh, represent my religion and my practice of my, uh, of my, of my beliefs in Hinduism. Uh, for example, uh, so living in Africa, we would go every now and again, once in a while to India, and whenever we did, I would be the first person to pull mom or dad, let's go to the temple, you know, uh, living in, in Zambia where you didn't, don't have many Hindu temples, I would be the, the, the one that was there, I would be the person to insist that we take the hours drive out of the city to make sure that we go for important religious festivals. I went and had my hair shaved off twice as an offering, as a dedication to the Hindu, Hindu gods and goddesses. Uh, I took my, um, my Hinduism very seriously. Uh, my, I have an older brother and he was more nominal in his <coughs> Hinduism. But for me, uh, coming from a very uh, high caste, there was a lot of sort of pride in that. Um, I was zealous, as I said, uh, and, uh, and, and very, um, uh, very uh, committed in many ways, uh, albeit not, uh, not fully, a bit ignorant, I should say, and not fully engaging. As much as I could practice of my Hinduism, I would and I did. Um, at the age of nine, very young, uh, from Zambia in Africa, um, uh, my brother and I had the opportunity to go to the UK, uh, to England, uh, for school. So I was at boarding school, and uh, the school that I went to, uh, so two schools, nine to, nine to 12, and then uh, secondary school, 13 to 17. The Christian, it was a Christian school, so Moncton Coombe School, are any of you familiar with Bath and that side of uh, England, uh, in the southwest, uh, is a Christian school, and <coughs> I was in the thick of it. So I had, it's a Christian school, here was me with my Hinduism and a lot of missionary kids and in, in, uh, <coughs> my best friends in the house, and of course it's a boarding school, so um, um, uh, we would uh, have big debates and big discussions late into the night in the dormitories, talking about Christianity and Christ and all these you know, mission kids and all these Christians and me and my own uh, fighting my corner for, for Hinduism um, and so uh, it was an interesting it was an interesting time it was definitely uh, I should also say very really importantly actually I have a uh, from even from at home in Zambia uh, a love for coffee and somehow I've had a, uh, an opportunity to house well, uh, coffee, at least uh, from a young age. You'll see where that fits in in a second. But, uh, um, but for me, um, people did not uh, convince me. And when, as Christians, we have to consider those from other religions. Um, sometimes we get into a, a um, uh, what do you say, a sort of, a, we, we pull out our apologetics full on. Know, and we go into fight mode sometimes, you know, some of us. Uh, and uh, one, one of the things that, as I'm sharing my testimony, I'm sort of, I'm ad-libbing a lot. I've got my notes here, but uh, in case I get nervous and go off, <laughs> start making things up. Uh, so, um, I, I just want to say this, throw this in, that, you know, as Christians, we need to really consider there's two sides. We do need our apologetics. We do need to know what we believe. And I'm going to come to that at the end. Um, 
But at the same time, we have to be gentle. We have to be caring. We have to be concerned. We have to have a heart for those people that don't, that come from other religions specifically, but those who don't know Christ. Um, so for me, uh, this is what happened, basically. Uh, kind of condense a lot of things because the Lord has done so many amazing things. But we would have these debates and, um, and, uh, and, and fights and discussions about religion. And it would be at the end of school, you know, after you had your new classes and so forth. Uh, people would just challenge me and tease me a little bit here and there. Um, there, was a, there was one other non-Christian in our dormitory. He was a Sikh uh, boy. And uh, he was very kind of quiet. He didn't get involved with all the debating and arguing. Uh, it was just me who was very sort of mm, uh, zealous and was going to carry the fight to the Christians. Um, and so on for a little while until uh, one, of, uh, one, of, one of my, I should say, uh, there, was lot, there was daily chapel, uh, compulsory chapel every day. There was Bible studies with the teachers. Um, there was Friday communion as we do here, very similar uh, at school. And so it was, there was a very sort of strong Christian ethos and a very sort of strong um, uh, kind of um, lot, a lot of people really committing, a lot of my friends, the teachers, uh, many of them were Christian and so on. So the environment was very Christian. Um, one of, uh, at that age, as a 13 year old at school, at the bottom of the uh, rung, so to speak, um, you don't have uh, many privileges, you know, you get all the lousy jobs, don't you? Um, uh, I, don't know, I don't know if anyone's familiar with any of this, but uh, um, yeah, when you get up to the prefect stage when you're 16, 17, 18, that's when <laughs> the privileges kick in and you can start ordering people and, and uh, telling people what to do. But at 13, uh, you don't get any of those kind of things. And for me, the one thing that really was a problem was I wasn't getting coffee. Uh, the, the prefects had their little brewing rooms, make your toast and make your coffee and what have you. But uh, for me it was a bit of a problem. So what one of my very good friends, one of these people who wasn't arguing with me in the, in the, in, in the night times, a friend of mine called Nathan, he discovered that I have this weakness for coffee. And he also knew that Thursday Bible study with Mr. Smith or whoever it was, was the one place where we, we, there was coffee and cakes and some other things. Uh, and let me take this quick opportunity to say we do have coffee. Uh, <laughs> for any of you who don't know Christ and for all of you who do. Um, so don't hesitate to come for a cup of coffee at the end. But for me, this, the, 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 the temptation and the desire for get my caffeine was too strong. So after a couple of weeks of resisting, I finally went and said, okay, I'm going to get my coffee and uh, this is going to be great. So I went along to Bible study and had my coffee. Sure enough, there were cakes and other stuff as well. And some, you know, Christian, some, somebody called Matthew, they're talking about Matthew, yeah, Christians, that's what they talk about, so that's fine. A few, few weeks later, Mark comes along, okay, Mark sounds like a Christian name, that's all good, uh, and so forth. We went through the Gospels, we went through um, different books in the Bible, and a sort of uh, sense of what was the Christian, uh, I won't say message, well, what was the Christian image, picture, started building up quite strongly uh, in my mind, uh, in my sort of awareness. Uh, of course, there was things, as I said, chapel and all of these things around, so there was an environment and an understanding in any case uh, going on. Um, uh, my, my Sikh friend, he wasn't really a friend, but we kind of had something in common in that we weren't Christians. He, he came up to me one after a while, after a, a few months of this, and he kind of said, you've been going to Christian Bible study rather a lot, what's with that? Um, and I, I had to sort of think quickly and say, what do I do with this? Um, and I said, well, I need to know what the Christians are thinking so that I can argue better with them after, you know, with, 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 with being better equipped and have more knowledge uh, so I can carry the debate to them. But the reality after this was about, I don't know, a year or so in, maybe a bit more than that, the reality was that God was working. Now, I couldn't see that at the time. I didn't really understand that at the time, but God was working. And, you know, when we, when we look at non-Christians, 
uh, we need to remember and we need to consider that we have something absolutely unique as Christians. The Holy Spirit is something that we, nobody can really put their finger on and say, I have this superpower or, you know, I have this uh, magic thing that you don't have. And we see this even in, in the Gospels, don't we? Um, um, Simon the sorcerer wanting to get the power. Uh, it's, not, it's not magic, it's not something we can buy, it's not something acquired. It is a God-given gift. Anyways, the, the Spirit, and I say it in that sense, in that context, was at work in me. And so I was coming up with excuses to, 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 to argue my way through as the Lord was working. After a couple of years, all my close friends, everybody had kind of given up on me. They fought, argued, debated um, uh, the works, uh, except for Nathan, who was the one who was praying for me and not arguing, and, and, and the one who invited me for you know, to Bible study, and a couple of others were praying in the background. But the Lord did something funny. He just basically, everyone gave up, and I was like, uh, I, I reached this point where one of my friends said, uh, you need to become a Christian. And I was like, well, you know, I don't know whether you know anyone who's been to India. If you go to India, you'll see, and you go into uh, in one of these little tuk-tuk three-wheel uh, autos, or uh, you, you travel in a taxi or anything, you'll see all of the Hindu gods. And in amongst all the gods, you'll see a picture of Jesus as well. And the mindset in Hinduism very crudely, very quickly, is that, well, I've got nothing to lose if I add one more god into my uh, armory of, you know, gods and goddesses there, so what, what's the harm? And there is this sort of mindset uh, in India, and so I kind of, in Hinduism as well, very, very, very sort of, you know, you, everyone has their god or goddess, their favorite one in general, and then you pray to all the others as well, or if it's exams, you pray to a particular god, and if it's money, you pray to another god, and so on. Um, in my case, I was like, well, no harm. This friend of mine basically said, uh, so I s s said to me, you need to believe in Jesus. And I said, well, no harm, right? I'll just put him in. Uh, but he said, no, you've got to write to your... Remember, in those, these days, there was no email, there was no internet, none of this stuff, right? It would take about three weeks for a letter from Bath in England to reach Lusaka in Zambia and uh, three weeks to get a response back. Anyways, this friend of mine said, you need to write to mom and dad and tell them that you, you know, are gonna become a Christian. And I thought nothing of it. Every weekend, every Sunday, it was kind of a compulsory thing. You had to write to your parents, and, and, and like we did, so it was like, write, write a letter. Uh, and so I wrote this letter to, to, to uh, my parents. I decided to become a Christian, and off it went. And about two months later, I got this <laughs> dissertation, you know, the, the, the length of my, um, you know, I don't know, my room almost, from my dad, uh, typed on his typewriter in those days, for most of you will remember typewriters, I think, um, typed a great length, and it was basically a barrage of why you can't do this, and so on and so forth, and it, it was more, more than I could handle. I went to my my friend, who was also 13 at the time, and I kind of said, what do you do with this? <laughs> and of course, he was 13 years old, same as me. He couldn't deal with the academic <clears throat> arguments and logic and all the rest of this, and you know, your reputation and your ancestry and all of that. So, so I had a bit of a crisis at this point, and I have to say, all of this Christianity stuff is on hold, but the Lord was working and working. Um, it's so hard to remove things and to make this like 20 minutes because I could be here for a while. But uh, I know you cut out parts, but that was an important thing because uh, the Lord basically just said, it was just working, and I just said to myself, forget all this stuff, I'm going to put it on hold. But the Lord had some thing in mind, and He brought me and this, the most unlikely. So, a lot of you all know from school in England. You don't hang out with the guys in, in the year above, but they don't hang out with you. You don't hang out with the guys in the year below, and they don't hang out with you. You have your friends, and you stick to them, and anyone below you is the scum, and any, everyone above you, you're the scum for them, kind of thing. <laughs> so, uh, so, so this was really odd, because I had this sort of coolness value, 
because I was the guy who was kind of blooding the nose of the Christians in my Hinduism. And, uh, and uh, so amongst the sort of nominals and others, there's, there's the guy, he's not, he's not the smartest, he's not the brightest, he's not the star football player in the team, but this is the guy who gives the, uh, the Christians a hard time. And so I had a bit of status, you know, a bit of, uh, I don't know what the word is, um, a bit of a reputation that was good in some ways. Uh, and uh, and uh, here was this guy who was the complete opposite from the here below me, and he was squeaky clean, uh, uh, the Christian guy, the knowledgeable guy, super clever. I'm sure he was at Oxford. Um, <laughs> I, I've been told that uh, I was been, I've been requested not to name him, but I'm going to name him. His name is James. Um, and uh, James was this uncool guy that everyone hated, sadly, but he was a very, very clever, very smart, very godly, very all, all, by all accounts, nice guy, you know. Um, and the Lord just brought James and I together in the evenings after school to have honey and coffee, obviously, honey <laughs> sandwiches and coffee. And we had this process of talking about Hinduism. We talked about coffee plantations in India. We talked about music, uh, the latest um, Brian Adams or whatever it was. Um, uh, we talked about a bunch of stuff, but there was always an agenda, and it was the Lord's agenda, and I could see this at the end. The Lord was bringing us to talk about Christianity, about Hinduism, and I can't go into all the details because it's just absolutely incredible how the Lord works in these things. But at the end of, at, towards the end of school, this is 16, 17 years old, um, we arrived at the resurrection of Christ. And that was the key thing. Of course, I had gone through a process of understanding a lot about Christianity through school, through the environment, through religious education, class, etc. But it's, as I said, it's about the Holy Spirit, it's about God working, it's about His way and His purpose and His plan. And if I wanted to make an argument to say it was all contrived and, uh, um, you know, <coughs> James and whatever my friends had all plotted together. To, it is impossible, it's absolutely impossible to make that argument. Um, so, so the Lord brought me to this point where, James and I, to this point where um, he was going to go away and think about some assignment that I had given him about Hinduism and pray about it. And this is me at the end of uh, end of school, so 17, about uh, doing my A-levels, about to go to university, and my assignment was to go and pray, think about, pray about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And, and uh, literally, <coughs> it was summer, literally the end, exams were done, and I was just about to leave school. James, of course, was in the year below me, so he still had a year left uh, to go, but for me, I... Uh, I was committed to uh, my task, my assignment, and I went away to my room to pray about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I knew that if it's not true, nothing lost. I learned a lot about Christianity and so forth, uh, but if it's true that it had to be Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone without all the gods and goddesses, I knew that, I understood that, and I was convicted. And in summary, no great dramatic thing happened to me. I was in my room, it was dark, it was cold, uh, it was quite frightening. Uh, <coughs> but I knew, by, I was convicted of my sins, of Christ, of the truth of the resurrection, of what he did for me. And we know the cross, uh, most of us, and we know the resurrection. But it was for me, the cross was sort of came afterwards almost. It was about Christ died and somebody from death has come to life. And that for me was completely mind blowing and it still is completely mind blowing. And if you think about it, it's pretty mind blowing that, that, that somebody dies. Why does he die? He dies for our sins, to take away our sins, our wrongdoing. 
all that stuff, all that bad language, all the misbehavior at school, and, and to this day, all, all my sins, and, and if you're in Christ, all your sins too. He died to take that away and resurrected to prove that those that death has been defeated, right? And my sin was taken away, and our relationship with Christ, my relationship with Christ established. And that's exactly what happened. And it was a wasn't it wasn't a sort of big dramatic anything. Um, it was just an understanding and a knowledge of that. Uh, boy, there's so much, I don't know how many time is, there's so much more I could say. But um, what happened next? A couple of days later, I was, um, uh, or, uh, we went out, it was summer, I went, we, we all went out for a walk on the Sunday. Uh, and then I was told on the Sunday, you're the, the chaplain wants you to go and uh, so I told I told a couple of friends not James interestingly um, I told a couple of friends on my decision and then suddenly it's got got through to the chaplain and the chaplain has basically said uh, you're going Monday morning up front to tell everybody uh, what you what you've decided to do to put your faith in Christ so on the Sunday I was like we we'll have a beautiful in the rural uh, haven as it was. I think the counties have changed a bit now. Um, and we were in the just sort of playing around on the Sunday, and then so Monday morning, first thing in chapel, the, the chaplain puts me up front and basically says, "Off you go." And so rather like I am now here before you all, I was up in front of all my school friends to basically say, "I have made a decision to give my life to Christ." I've never seen so many jaws drop, you know. Um, some of those people are like, this is the guy who terrorized us with this, that, and that. Um, but uh, but uh, it was a decision that I've never regretted. Uh, and uh, the Lord has kept me going, and kept me going, and kept me growing. Uh, and so into university, and a whole lot of distractions, but then the Lord has continued to work. Um, and, and, as I said, there's lots of things I could add to that, but a couple of things that I do want to say very quickly. Um, coming to Christ is something that is absolutely essential. Uh, there's no decision that is more critical for any of us here than that decision. A testimony is wonderful. We, those of us who have come to Christ, We've all each got a testimony every bit as valid as the other, anyone else's. Coming to Christ is critical. What do you do with your testimony? Or what happens after you give your testimony, you share? I mean, I hope and pray that each one of you are encouraged to hear about my uh, experience of coming to Christ. But your own experience coming to Christ is every bit as important, if not more so, because it's you, your testimony. What do you do with it? What are you going to do with it? I hope that, like me, many of you will be up here or in your own churches back home in England or uh, in those countries we had at the start, all those places, um, to share your testimony. Um, but then what after that? What happens after you've shared your testimony and encourage a few Christians? Well, I'll tell you what I've done, because I think it's so important. And this is just give me, whoever, give me a few seconds here, Oscar. Um, I did something, I just made this up myself. Nobody told me, nobody said, or suggested, but I'm going to say it and suggest it. I've got something called a personal statement of faith. A personal statement of faith. And here it is, and I'm not going to read the whole thing out. It's quite short, actually. Um, it, 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 the first draft took me about 10 minutes. Uh, so each of you can do a personal statement of faith. And what does it say? It says exactly what you believe. I believe in the the, the Holy Bible to be inspired, to be infallible, etc. I believe in Jesus Christ and his deity, his virgin birth, his sinless life. I believe in the Holy Spirit, God's presence at work in the world, in the church, and in us as individuals. Uh, I believe that God created us for a purpose. What is that purpose? And I, want, I, I would love each of you to do that and back it up with scripture. So I'll give you a couple of scriptures. If you got, I was going to warn you and say, get your Bibles out. I won't do that right now. But 
um, Timothy, 2 Timothy 3.16. Uh, look it up if you don't know it. Ephesians 2, 4 and 5. Uh, that was, yeah, didn't really have time to prep all of these, but look it up if you've got some, some seconds. Um, John 8, 47. These are critical to those things I just mentioned, believing uh, in, in the, uh, the inerrancy, the authority of the word of God, believing in the deity of Christ, believing in the Holy Spirit, believing in the work that God is doing in and amongst us through the Holy Spirit, the gospel, knowing the good news about Jesus Christ. And I hope that you've got a bit of that from my testimony, that God created us to be with the right relationship with him. Our sins separated us from God, broke that relationship. Sin cannot be undone by our good works or by anything else. We cannot undo our sins. We've been, Sabrina and my wife here is here, we've been to churches all over the place, in India, all over India, the UK, all over the UK, uh, and in Zambia as well, where people say there are many paths to God. All <clears throat> paths are all the same in the end. It's all one big God. <clears throat> no, that's rubbish. That's not true at all. It's a nonsense. There's one way and one way alone. That is Jesus Christ. <clears throat> right? And we need to, we need to re recognize that and remember that in our testimonies. Uh, that, that, that sin separates us from God. We can't do anything about it. But paying the price, Jesus Christ died. As I mentioned earlier, to take away those that sin. Everyone who believes in him receives eternal life. Everyone who believes in him, trusts in him, puts their faith in him, receives eternal life. And living for Christ starts today and lasts for eternity. You will be in the presence of God. This life is just passing, we know that. You will be in eternity with God, and that will be the most glorious, most wonderful uh, thing. And you'll, you know, your testimony won't matter. You will just be with, with, with Jesus Himself. So I want to close with that, and I'm just going to pray. But I just challenge you: uh, think about your testimony. Maybe put out a, a statement, a personal faith statement. Back it up with some scripture, and I would just uh, say to anyone who does not believe in Christ, anyone here who has questions or doubts, uh, speak to Pastor Trevor when he's back with us. Speak to Maggie, who's at the back there. Speak to myself or to my wife, Sabrina, to anyone who's, who you know is a solid, godly, Christian person in this church. Um, bring your doubts, bring your questions to us. Uh, and uh, it may be an encouragement and a blessing to bring you into the knowledge of the true and the living God. So. Uh, i just close with a prayer and then i hand over back to Oscar. Let's pray, shall we? <clears throat> Gracious Heavenly Father, God, we just praise you and thank you for all that you're doing in our world and all that you're doing in our individual lives. We want to pray and commit our, our lives into your hands. Those who know you, Lord, we pray that you will continue to work and disciple us and strengthen us in our faith to know you more. For anyone who does not, Lord, we pray that you would convict them to know their sins and to know that you alone, Lord Jesus Christ, is the one who forgives sins. Bless and be with us through the rest of this service and throughout this Sunday. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When we think about the first time when we give our lives to Jesus, and then we think about our testimony, when it comes to my mind, is you know, that God tells me, go to your first love. Remember when you came to the Lord Jesus? I do remember when I came to the Lord Jesus, the passion that it was there to preach the gospel, to share the gospel with others. Amen. So uh, I hope that we could be like thinking about that, uh, especially the, these days that we are living. Perilous time, we are living in perilous time, but with God, hallelujah, our Lord Jesus Christ who is with us, amen? amen. And, uh, you know, it could come in the blink of eyes. He could come, I mean, amen. amen? Do you believe that the Lord is coming soon? Yes. 
Amen. Amen. And the Lord could call me today, you know, as well. So it's good to 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 humble ourselves and say, Lord, help me. Help me to be humble. Help me to to follow you. And help me to be in the first love. Amen. That that when you're in the first love, you know, you, you want to, to tell all this about Jesus. You want to Amen. So this is this is good. This is a good prayer for our life. So I just want to encourage you to go ahead with the law. If God is with you, Amen. who can be against you? No one. Amen. Amen. Do you believe it? Amen. Amen. We are going to sing a song and then uh, please feel uh, welcome to stay with us, have tea and coffee and some little chocolate as well. Today is my birthday and uh, I will invite you to a little chocolate. Okay. So praise the Lord. Amen. We are going to sing and give him all the glory to Jesus.
you Lord for that wonderful testimony that we just heard and we thank you Lord for the impact that you have each of us Lord and the commitment that this dear brother has made and the challenge to each one of us we thank you Lord for the music and the worship and the praise we thank you for the prayers that have gone up in the individual and that you've heard every one of those prayers but we believe by faith that you answer prayer because you're the God who never changes and also Lord it's been mentioned uh, about the Middle East situation the situation in Gaza the situation in the Red Sea the situation of Taiwan where the Chinese are waiting to invade we see North Korea with a nuclear weapon <coughs> threatening the east coast, west coast of the United States. But I'm just reminded of the verse in the Old Testament where your word says that all the nations of the earth to you are as but a drop in a bucket and as counted as less than nothing. So to you, Lord, all these nations that are against you and against your people are to you less than nothing. And we know that you have all power in heaven and in earth. And we rely on you for our divine protection in this life and in the life to come. And we praise and bless your holy name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Please join us for coffee and tea, and God bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.